Hello, Ross. So this is not a spoiler. Last week's puzzle was a cipher. My daughter, Olivia, solved it and commented that she thought it was clever. And I asked her, did you crunch it out and decode it by hand? Or did you use a website to decipher it? She was sort of bashful and admitted she had used a website to do the decoding. I had to tell her the point is figuring it out, solving it, and enjoying it. Plus, there were a lot of letters to crunch, so a lot of room to make mistakes. If even one letter was off, our answer page would have returned it as wrong. And you would have been frustrated and wouldn't have enjoyed it as much. Also, I probably used the same website to encode it so that I could be absolutely certain that I didn't make any mistakes, which would have also taken away from the enjoyment factor. This idea that the person who sacrifices or suffers more for the exact same result is somehow better drives me insane. Both of my children were born by C-section, my firstborn after laboring the old-fashioned way for many hours unsuccessfully. The number of people especially women who pitied me afterward, like it wasn't a real delivery, was mind-boggling. They handed me a baby at the end. Who cares how it got there? Though it exists for every subject, I call this type of person an art martyr. There is always someone doing it harder than you, and they will let you know. Potters do this to each other all the time. Oh, you use an electric wheel? I use a kick wheel. Oh, you buy your clay? I dig my clay from the ground. Oh, you use commercial glazes? I measure and mix mine by hand. Oh, you buy your raw ingredients? I spend six months of every year enslaved in the Congo and mine my own cobalt. If it has no effect on the final outcome, who cares? Artists also get a lot of slack from non-artists if they don't suffer enough. And I don't mean just by going hungry, though there is that, the disappointment that non-artists have when an artist gets a paying job instead of relying on their art to pay the bills. Photographers are often not considered real artists because they just clicked the shutter release. We too often equate hand skills, how well you manipulate a pencil or a paintbrush, with art. But art is about taking a visual idea that's in your head and manifesting it into the world for other people to enjoy. Like having a baby, who cares how you got it out of you? The result is what's important. However, I have been taught recently that there is some value in doing things the hard way. My oldest daughter, Lena, just graduated from university with a degree in medical illustration. And for a graduation gift, we gave her a large Cintiq drawing tablet display. About a year ago, she had told me about a professor who cautioned the art students not to spend too much time making digital art, but to stick with traditional media because digital art makes you a bad artist. These are my words. This is how I remember it. I internalized that as him just being an art martyr because, like with photographers, people assume that digital art is less than real art, especially because there's no original canvas, but an infinite amount of copies, each exactly as good as the first. When she was marveling over this Cintiq and all the digital art she was going to make on it, I referenced her professor and how wrong he was. And Lena said, no, that professor was right. She said that when an artist works only in digital, they become too reliant on the crutches of digital art. Undo, many layers, different saved files. And when they are asked to just draw on paper, they are paralyzed by their lack of that crutch. But even beyond that, they stop seeing many aspects of the art in their head and just start trying things out on the computer. The pen and ink illustrator has to understand line weight as they are putting ink on the paper. But the digital illustrator can just use the artificial line weight that Photoshop brushes provide or can try out different stroke weights or various things until they go, oh yeah, that looks right. Not, oh, that matches what's in my head. But also, your brain learns to work within the boundaries, narrow or wide, of that medium. When I looked at something and thought, I should put that on a mug, my brain would automatically filter out the details that would be lost in clay and would subconsciously consider what colors are more stable in my firing temperature. This went on to such an extent that if at that time I sat down with pen and paper, I would still only make the cruder designs, ones that translated well to clay, no matter how much more detailed ink would let me go. 
Now that I work a lot in 3D, if you were to ask Lena and me to draw a scene, Lena would open Photoshop and I would open Blender because my brain is always asking, how would I 3D render this idea? In many ways, it's not the digital versus traditional is easy versus hard, but being too finely focused starts to limit what you can do. I admit that as a potter, I have art martyred. I am a big proponent of knowing how to mix your own glazes, but not because it's more work, though it is, but because A, it's vastly cheaper than buying commercial glazes in the long run, and B, you can't tweak a commercial glaze without throwing off the rest of the chemistry. Doing it the hard way means having more knowledge about the whole process and more importantly having more control so that the end result is exactly as you pictured it in your head. And again, like a baby, manifesting in, into the world what was once only inside of you is the point. If someone can achieve that by simpler methods, great. If someone needs or wants to go the scenic route, that's great too. The only rule is, no matter what someone picks, don't be a douchebag. And that's it for this week, Ross. Bye! <laughs>